get on this side of this. Find a spot. When you go to Navajo ceremonies, you will hear songs about sheep, about how they bring a lot of balance to your life. My 
mother and uh, my father, they used to tell us, take care of the sheep, uh, uh, care for them. It seems like caring for the sheep was the main priority in our lives. I learned how to weave when I came home from school one day. I was in the second grade and I came home and mom had a loom set up for me and she told me today you're going to learn how to weave. My love for it was natural because my my paternal grandmother grandmothers and my maternal grandmothers were weavers. I've gone to college and I have my bachelor degree in an, uh, environmental management and conservation science. However, I choose to be a weaver and to take care of the sheep. Me and my, my brothers, we were young, and to herd sheep, we didn't like it. And even now, sometimes it's, you don't like to herd sheep because it's cold or it's too hot. What they were actually teaching us was that sheep is life. We were raised here all our lives, especially my dad. He passed away 10 years ago. And so I'm trying to carry on what he believed in and how to maintain the land and live off the land and along with the cattle on how to raise the, uh, maintain the livestock. It's not an easy job to, to do all of this. It, it takes hard work. And so I carry on that legacy that he left for us, and I want to continue that. I grew up with weaving. I've been weaving every day for 25 years now. I like sand painting because there's stories behind it. The stories behind it talks about life, about ourselves, and that's what I really admire about weaving the sand painting rugs. My uh, grandma and my uh, granddad, they were growers. They grew sheep and they produced wool. And that led to my mother at an early, her early age, learn how to weave. My mother is the only one that owned a lot of sheep. She will never let go of sheep because she, that's all she ever knew. And my dad was the guy that just wants to get out there and just do whatever he can do. He loved to rope. As a child, he always tells me that he roped coyote, dogs, even snakes, <laughs> off horseback. When we started this weaving project, I thought of it as a way to get in touch with my family, to finally spend time with them, because growing up, I, I stopped spending time with my family. I felt like I lost touch since I go to school, far away from home, and I felt detached. And I wanted to attach myself to my family before I leave college.
We'll dry. This is very warm. Is it warm? Water. I want to show my grandma that there's still hope for us to continue on our culture. Dirtiest one I've seen so far. That black one. Put another one. Put water and then uh, let it sit. More soap. Lift it up. Since I started this weaving project, she showed me what responsibilities I must take as a young woman to be successful in this world. I love being a Navajo woman. There's a lot of teaching that my mother taught me. She says a woman is a very beautiful gift on the face of this earth. Because they bear children. She said without a woman there'll be no home. It takes a woman to make a life. She says, you teach your children the same way. My father was a medicine man. And my mother was a medicine man's wife. So they pray, they're very traditional. They keep everything holy. To them, everything was sacred. They would tell us not to dig grounds for no reason at all because you're not supposed to do that. That's not the holy way to do it. The strip mining has destroyed all these springs. During the strip mining process, they've destroyed the Weeple Aquifer. Federal law requires mining companies to replace any community or private wells that they destroy. And it's been more than 25 years. Peabody has not even come, come to even replacing a single well. That eclipse. She says that the surface waters have all dried up because of all the mining activities um, using the water for coal slurry. People have been relocated, but um, there's no running waters in the homes. She said, and I hauled my water in a, a little um, gallon of jug that I bring back. I 
I speak on behalf of Loop community, people my age, the young voters of the reservation, when we say no to Black Mesa. Our land has, it's rich in coal and in water, yet most of our people are without electricity and running water. We call the Navajo Nation Council to transition to a clean economy. We want to have our leadership understand that the kind of economic development that we are looking forward to is not so much, it's not power plants, it's not coal mining, it's not oil, oil mining, oil drilling, and look to other sustainable ways of producing energy such as solar and wind. These things, with these things, we can look to the future for our children. Protect your water. Wherever you are in your residency, protect your water because they might be coming after you too. Hello. One day I got sick and um, I thought I just caught a cold. I ended up in emergency. I couldn't breathe. And they, they diagnosed me with uh, asthma. And I knew the power plant has a lot to do with it. I knew. I'm 55 years old. The last 40 years, I've been breathing in pollution from the power plant. Sometimes I just pull off the road and look at, look where I sleep. No wonder, you know, I sleep in the pollution. And that's why I'm angry, because I did not know that the pollution can create a lot of serious health problems. It's a good thing that Desert Rock Power Plant came into focus. I'm, I'm a chapter official. They came into our chapter one Sunday when we were having a chapter meeting and they asked us to uh, approve a resolution for that Desert Rock Power Plant. They would have approved it. I said, no, wait a minute. There's something right there. We had too many plants. Wait a minute. Let's discuss this further. I want somebody to do something about it. But then I say, why somebody? Why can't it be me? Shay, you Sarah White in Shay. I don't cut Nessa in Snow, put it in it, but she's cheating, that she does a cheat, or touching the edge of Nalle. But I, a Yaha is son in Snow. I don't shut a Yahi con at all. I didn't cry. So I now stayed all Berman, Nana Pauline Gilmore. あの、ね、マンレニゲドマリ。こっあべにかい。あの、シャッチンレニゲドエコタエヤヘニカイ。ベニゲホロボエヤヘニカイ。パーパレンレニゲエヤプロポーズドゥザラパーパレン。エドタ
Chatterhaste, ชาสทีนเดชอลโฮเบลเกนเดเอสลาสซอนลีนเอสลาวนายะอิตอะเคยะอิตอะเบลโตไทดิจุตอชิยาจอนเดกิบะโฮเบลเกนเดเอเอเ
ta ocho les les na halo nta chikie jun a to da na bes nta chus ni sen hanat ani ta ni lena hanat han han hanat ani ta ni lena da ta ti lo si ya zi ya e ya e ta e bet san do chu ten te te so ho si ke a do te e ya e slim slim ta ba ha wa li en de so e do bes nta chus ni e do ten I don't lose top of her, though, eight or ten. It said, so it's not all that just then she called her. I don't watch your, watch your, watch your chan or the end is he, eight of us in Dutch, eight or heads of his he, though, at ten cans of his he, who don't need. So I turn the hobbit nice and start. I don't slaughter. But I bet we're in Hoi ya en jit na sho ade ya da na ji cha Ha ta ho a ko na 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 khai da se to Ta na shun se ta na nus kha ro Se 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 do ba ti da se ni O ha ni da to kya se to to ha ni da I was saying, I am in the city. I kiss. I thought I kiss. I said that I kiss. So I see it all. She thought it was not answer. So I want to kiss. So they did. She tried on her not. Not 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 There was a systematic denial by the government of its uh, role in causing these health problems amongst the, the miners. Between 1969 and 1993, almost 70 percent of all new lung cancer cases were, ex were associated with one exposure and one exposure only underground uranium mining. I worked at UNC Mine from October or September of 76 up to April of 1982. And I worked as an underground surveyor. And I worked right alongside the, uh, the underground you know, miners. And uh, it's not something that I would, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't do it, no. And at the time we were hired, we weren't cautioned or warned of what kind of health effect uranium would do to you. The only time the, the mining officials would get these mine uh, up, to the, up to the safety standards was when the, uh, the ocean inspectors were coming. We knew when they were coming because they would start telling the laborers to set up barricades, reroute those ventilation bags, ventilate certain areas out, and barricade blocked off certain ones. And sure enough, the OSHA inspectors would be coming around. But once they left, down goes the barricades, and out came the uh, ventilation, and people just went right through, went, went about their business again. We're confronted right now with uh, several major national leaders uh, proposing a massive resumption of nuclear power. Well, I don't know where they think that they get the fuel for nuclear power plants, but there's a substantial amount of uranium still under the Navajo Nation that the net people sit on. And from what I can tell, they don't want any more mining. They've felt like they have paid dearly enough they don't feel like they want or need to host another era of potentially poisonous and hazardous activities in their backyard. We're informed that another company was interested in opening the area over here again and setting up shop. HRI Hydro Resource Incorporated. 
their parent company is the Uranium Resource Incorporated from South Texas. But from, my, from what I understand and what I've been informed, HRI has never had any experience in mining, and their method was to use the in-situ in leach mining method, which requires using the underground aquifer, millions and millions of gallons of water to, to flush out the uranium from underground. HRI is proposing to uh, drill injection points into the aquifer that the community of Crown Point drinks from. Not only the Crown Point community, but also outlying communities all the way from Lake Valley, Whitehorse Lake, all the way to Coyote Canyon, Standing Rock, even people right up here, up in Mariano Lake and Standing uh, Smith Lake. People go down there to get their water because that water is so pure. HRI will be purposely contaminating the water to get that the uranium out. They're just going to destroy that water and destroy the whole community of Crown Point. When we have our rug auctions, um, we get probably about two to three hundred rugs and a hundred weavers. When people come to the rug auction, I usually try to tell them, you know, take care of these rugs that you're buying because it took a lot for these weavers to make these rugs. They made it from their heart and they, they put a lot of their mind, you know, into weaving of the rugs. And this is their livelihood. They spend that money they get from their rug to buy food for their family, to pay for that pickup, monthly payment. Yeah, let's do it half of the time. Over here uh, is where we pay, where you go to pay for your rug, so you don't have to wait until the, uh, at the end of the auction. I think it's really important to them, and I think that's why they continue to come to the auction month after month. I bring my rug here every month. That's how I do my living by weaving. And this is the only place um, where I sell my rug. It takes me about three weeks to finish it. I guess my family are used to Crown Point water because it's fresh, it's clean, and it tastes really good. It's approximately about 24 miles. That's as far as we haul water from. Ha <laughs> ha
every corner of the reservation there are some uh, legacy that the past uranium mining had left behind and our people are suffering from those and so you just kind of got this whole area right up here of uh, mining activity the mess that's left behind and then there's another future that wants to come in and then the stratomore up here and then the, the uh, and then the uh, the waste that's on you next to it again so it's just like when are they going to stop My grandma taught me many things. He said, weaving is a way to get through this world. There's stories in here. You can put your stories in this rug. Every string of yarn for this rug is important. It shows who you are as an individual. I'm just taking a little step, but this shows when you see my grandmother's eyes look on upon us as we shear her sheep, as we take care of them, do all the responsibilities she, she bestows on us. Since I started weaving, I know where I come from, I know who I am, and I know where I'm going in life. My mother and my father, they live over there next to us. And um, we, um, they came here from Sweetwater because um, they couldn't get the health care that they would get here. This is before my father had a stroke. They ran about 65 head of cattle. You know, he had to liquidate all that to pay for his medical bill and his for his um, rehab. Although they might miss home, their home and everything that they had back where they were living, now they're getting the care that they need through the uh, county health department. This whole 600 acre is, is going to be used by Site Global and DPA. They're going to put um, the desert rock power plant right here in this very place. And just a little bit further this way is the drill inside. Our precious water is being drilled right here and we don't like it. We're dependent on our groundwater, our aquifer water for our next generation and they're drilling it out. All this beautiful grazing land here is going to be strip minded. There's Ellis Gilmore live out here. There's people live out on this um, area. Along the strip mining, the lease, they live on the lease land. They're on relocation land. They had no running water. Ellis Gilmore have no electricity. And these people, the company, um, the mine company, the APS, the power plants, they're rich people. They make a lot of money off the land, off the minerals that I'm standing on right here. And this water isn't even going to go to El um, Ellis's house. It's not going to nobody's house, but it's going to be used to cool down the power plant. That's a waste of water. I mean, what do we do next? We're going to have to do something about it. And we are making a stand to do something about it. We are not going to sit and have them take advantage of us anymore. They've done that to our great-grandfathers, to our grandfathers, because they cannot write, they cannot speak English, they cannot, they were afraid. 
To this day, we're still afraid. But some of us decided that we're not going to be no longer afraid. We're going to stand up to these people and we're going to tell them enough is enough. And this is where we draw the line. Come here, girls. They're here, turning around. Come here, girls. 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 They're all female. That's why they're calling them girls. It's been over 10 years that that we've been holding back HRI. But, but we'll continue fighting. As long as we're here, we'll continue fighting this company. And I believe we've, we've, we've come a long way and, um, and, and we've, we're successful in certain ways because you don't see anything out there yet. You'll never see anything out there yet. As long as I'm here, I will continue fighting for what I believe in and what my dad had believed in because he always, he always said no to the uranium company that had come in. None of what happened with uranium in the past was sustainable. And it's not going to be sustainable in the future. No matter how many times the mining companies will say, that this is uh, environmentally benign operations and we're gonna put all these people to work. The people won't believe it. Um, the experts don't believe it. The leadership of the Navajo Nation doesn't believe it. And ultimately this is an issue of human rights and justice. Our life out here is tough. It's very tough. You have to be strong and in order to endure through it. <laughs> we live and we work within the culture. Not only Am I weaving to continue the tradition, but um, I'm weaving so, so that I can survive. I'm weaving for my daughter, I'm weaving for my future grandchildren, and then children that will be coming. My role in the family is I hold a leadership role. Everyone looks up to me. Being a leader in the family can be stressful at times, but I understand it's, it's my role that I, I must take on. When I think about myself fitting in this world, I see myself bringing something back to the reservation. I want to become an engineer, no matter what type, electrical, environmental, or civil, mechanical. One of those titles, I see myself bringing something back to the reservation so, so that way the reservation can benefit from it. I just want to do something to bring back to the community. I want to help my people, you could say, I want to improve their lives, I want to better their lives, I want to do so many great things. <laughs>